Salutations to the Truth Corps, whoever and wherever you may be on the planet. I'm here today to explain to you what you see when you come to Nemata. To begin, I'd like to extend my thanks to those of you who are coming to Nemata. I was talking to the admin and director of the school, Caridwin, this morning, and she pointed out to me that over the last month or so, in response to the talks I've been posting on my two channels and her as well on Janith Waite, and as well on the channel of Hans Kossen, my colleague in Sweden, well, as a result of that activity, a um, hundred or more people have come to the site, to the platform, the school, to register as guests. And uh, a number of others uh, have joined the staff. So I'm really grateful for this activity. It helps me enormously to keep the school going. And so I thought it would be appropriate to brief you on what you see when you come to the school. And perhaps I can offer some orientation or some cues and guidelines as to how to proceed and benefit from the material that you find there. Needless to say, what you see when you come to the school is a lot. I myself am sometimes surprised at the magnitude of the content. Today I did something unusual. I signed out of the platform and I just went in as someone surfing on the internet, not even as a registered guest. And I found that I could access many, many landing pages. I could access uh, talks on certain landing pages. And I was surprised at how much is available just coming in at random like that. But of course, I intentionally set it up that way. So there's plenty to see, I'd say, if you're just coming in by chance, there's more to see if you are a registered guest, and there's more to see if you join the staff. I use the word staff to refer to the students who donate to Nemata because they are in fact student teachers. Their commitment through their donations is not merely financial, but they also commit their time and their attention to the development of the school. And so teach as you learn is the motto of the Sofiani School of Arts and Sciences. And all staff are both students and teachers at the same time. Before I do a quick tour of the various courses and vocations and other features of the school, I'd like to establish clearly in your minds what Nemata is, what is the founding concept. Well, I claim, here I go again with one of my outrageous claims, that it is a modern mystery school. So that's a powerful term, that's a loaded term mystery school, which of course comes from the ancient pagan world. I've written extensively about the mystery schools in not in his image. There is a deep background to Nemata. Nevertheless, the mystery schools that existed centuries ago were specific to that time, place, setting, culture, language, and to the people who founded and directed those schools. And the mystery school today takes on a completely different look. Even though it is founded and grounded on those ancient origins, it has a new look. 
it's a novelty. It's an expression of singularity in our time in the 21st century. So you might imagine that there are four pillars anchored deeply in the ground. And let's say that they represent the four corners of an ancient mystery school cell. You know, the mystery schools were organized in cells and the actual meeting place of the cells was generally outside of a town, in the country, in the groves. Nemata is the plural of the word nematon, which means a grove. So the original mysteries were celebrated in the nemata, in the sacred groves. But generally there was a small courtyard, square or rectangular courtyard with four walls, and against one wall of that courtyard, there was a small building because it was important and essential to the Teleste, the leaders of the mystery schools, to conduct some of their practices inside. And often there was a tree within the four walls of the courtyard or outside, or there was a grove of trees around the courtyard. So imagine that all of that is gone, but there are still four pillars in a rectangle that represent the remains of that ancient foundation. Well, likewise, there are four pillars that define the structure and purpose of the Sofianic School of Arts and Sciences. For easy reference, you can call them the four characteristics that make this event unique. And it is an event in the world. It's not merely on the internet. It's an event to be engaged and developed in the lives of people in their own lives. These four characteristics are, one, the students run the school. I have said in the introductory message on the landing page that Yes, this is a cult. Yes, I am a cult leader, but it is an educational cult and everything about it is transparent and open. And the purpose of the cult is to liberate and enlighten the minds of participants rather than to control them. Number two, the operations of the school both for the main professor who founds it, as well as all who come into it as staff, are based on the Maitreya process. So you can go directly to the unit on the Maitreya process if you're a registered guest and learn what that is. Point number three, all participants share the same purpose and the purpose of the school is twofold to propagate planetary Tantra, as well as to restore and regenerate the humanities. So bear that in mind. Nemata is dedicated to the recovery and restoration of the humanities. I'll get back to that point later on. Finally, the fourth characteristic of Nemata is this. It is not an online university, although it looks like one, and I have to admit, in some respects, you're probably likely to treat it that way. That is not the primary intention. As I said in the welcome message, it is the online portal to an in-life program of education and experimentation. So everything that you find in the virtual in Nemata is intended to go into real life, to be translated, converted, communicated, and propagated in real life through your life. Your life and your activities then become the instrument for the propagation of Nemata. 
So far, so good. So let me see if I can guide you quickly through the structure of the school to point out the principal components, each of which has subdivisions and subcategories. In the welcome message, I propose that you consider coming to Nemata on the internet as if you were in a holographic projection, if you'll forgive me, and you found yourself on the grounds of the campus of a university. So there are classrooms, there are auditoria, there are other facilities and buildings on the school. I emphasize that Nemata is a school under construction. It is physically under construction. And the courses that are offered are also continually in development. And I realize that that could be a drawback and a disadvantage when you come to the school. It might look chaotic, but in fact, it is alive. It is a complex living organism, and that is why it looks chaotic. But not to be put off by that, perhaps I can help you with this little orientation. The landing page contains a welcome message, which I think I'll redo soon. And it contains a link to navigating Nemata, which also needs to be revised. But basically that page explains how the school is laid out. Now, this year we'll be going on the third anniversary of Nemata in September, and the ideas that I had for how to organize the many, many units in the school have changed over that time, and I would like to streamline that presentation. Secondly, you can go to the visitor section, since you are a visitor, and there you will see that there is a layout of the total material in Nemata, the total content, using the analogy of seven different groves, and there's a recorded talk. That may be helpful for your orientation. Third, you can go to the menhir, which means a standing stone, and that is like the campus bulletin board where you find that I have listed all of the current new material month by month. Checking the dashboard for the site, it's a WordPress platform, I noticed that there are 429 units currently available on Nemata. A unit is a page of screen which contains text, text only, often with illustrations, or text and talk. So there are 429 available units, and some of those are available to registered visitors, but not all. And there are about 700 other units to be presented eventually in the courses and in the vocations. Now I invite you to look at the Planetary Tantra page for Nemata. Now Planetary Tantra is something that comes from the Terma of Gaia Awakening, which comes from August of 2008. And Planetary Tantra is the toolkit and you could say the delivery system for the Terma of Gaia Awakening. Now there's a unique feature, there are two unique features of the Planetary Tantra page, which is available to registered visitors. Three actually. The first one is that it contains a link to material that is still carried on metahistory.org. So on that website, which uh, I created in 2002, 
more than 18 years ago, there is a lot of material on Planetary Tantra, and you can go and access that original material if you choose to do so. Secondly, you find the material of Planetary Tantra that has migrated to Nemata. So, what I did when Nemata was founded in September 2018 was I undertook the process to carry over that material from metahistory.org, a lot of which is on Nemata now, but specifically for Planetary Tantra, I intended to make it always publicly available at no cost, it's completely free, and so I repackaged it, and you'll find some of it presented in the curricula panels, which are contained on that page. And you can access all those panels, which have talks and text, and there is one video interview I did as well. You can access them as a registered member. The third feature is that you have the Planetary Tantra Forum, where you can discuss subjects on topic relative to the school and Planetary Tantra with other people, including other visitors, as well as staff members who will occasionally, and often in fact, participate following the motto, motto of the school, which is teach as you learn. Now, stepping back and taking an overview of the whole enchilada, there are basically four areas. You can divide up the entirety of the content into four areas or categories. First category is the courses. So there are 12 courses in specific topics. Gaian alchemy, cosmology, Grail Studies, Gnosis Today, Metacritique, Living Myth, Poetic Craft, Kali Yuga, Biomysticism, Mythophrenia, Sky Watching, Ideosophy. Those are the 12 courses. And within each of those courses, there is considerable diversity. For instance, within Course 9 on Biomysticism, you will find a unit on what we call in the school Nugenics, N-U-G-E-N-I-C-S. And this is a facility of the school, a faculty within the organization of the entire educational platform, which concerns the revival of the seven lively arts. So in the ancient mystery schools, the initiates had their own intramural concerns. They talked about certain things among themselves. The illustration I present in Not in His Image comes from the pediment of the mystery school at Eleusis, and it shows the eight-petaled and the 16-petaled rosette. So the mystery schools were constructed on that model. So there were eight petals turned inward and eight petals turned outward. So whatever the initiates or telestai, the Gnostic of, of that time, the Gnostics, discussed among themselves, remained among themselves. But then they turned to the outer world and they taught on the basis of what they learned in their private or intramural activities, which included the telestic method of instruction by the light, that is to say, direct contact with the organic light the primary substance body of the Aeon Sophia. They kept that to themselves, 
but then they turned to the world and they educated the pagan world on the basis of what they learned from the mother goddess. We do the same at Nemata. The Nugenics unit contains different arts and sciences, such as healing, music, body work, and so forth. The ancient teachers of the mysteries taught all of those things in the pagan world. So there is room in Nemata, there is a place in Nemata for almost everything that you can imagine, except I would say sports and politics. So what I'm getting at is that each of the 12 courses is quite rich and quite diverse. And you as a visitor can access the landing pages of all those courses, some of which have talks. In that way, you can introduce yourself to the material and you can see if it engages you, if it entices you in any way. What, after all, do you seek to learn? What is your disposition to learn? What will benefit you the most to learn? What will enhance your life and bring you a sense of transpersonal purpose? I've said that the motto of Nemata is teach as you learn. You could as well add another formula which goes like this. The transpersonal fulfills the personal. The personal cannot fulfill itself. So if you're looking for some fulfillment to your personal life, I can guarantee you, you will never find it exclusively in your personal life. That is not the way human animals have been designed to reach their optimal potential by our divine parents. Nemata invites you to a transpersonal path of experience. It doesn't mean you leave behind or deny or discount in any way the value of your personal life, not at all. It just adds another dimension to your personal life. Following the 12 courses, you will also see that there are three vocations, 13, the humanities, 14, celestics, and 15, the GNE, which stands for the Gaian Navigation Experiment. So these three vocations are sort of like postgraduate courses. After you get the degree that you're seeking by mastering the material of one of the courses, you go to the postgraduate courses, which are extensive. They do require a long-term commitment, years in fact. So they are different and that's why they are called vocations rather than courses. Then of course, 16 is the great hall or auditorium of planetary Tantra, of which I've already spoken. And 17 and 18 are two facilities at Nemata where the staff meet. This is our offices. This is where we get together and we talk about what's going on in the school and the staff talks with the main professor who founded the school and who contributes and creates all of the content. Even though those areas are restricted to staff, you can go and read the landing page of the Terma and the Turton and the landing page of Breaking News to get an idea of what it means like to be involved with the staff. On that note, by the way, I need to remind myself to record another talk about what happens when you come into Nemata as staff. That would be a different kind of orientation talk, long overdue, I would say. 
Finally, there is one more faculty at Nemata, which you will find indicated on the menu panel on the home page, the Dragonfly Sutra and Dog Zen. Now this is a faculty that I added in the year 2020, I believe. And it stands in a way apart from the other activities of the school, but it's also integral to the central concept of Nemata. Basically, without getting too fast and fancy about it, Dog Zen and the Dragonfly Sutra represent my individual contribution to the complete takedown of Buddhism. Now I'm known for having taken down the Abrahamic religions. That's part of my reputation. But I've also spent a lot of time in my life involved with Buddhism. I've known many Buddhists. I've studied and even in a way practiced certain forms of Buddhism, particularly Chan, which comes from the Chan masters of the ninth and 10th centuries. It was the predecessor of Zen. And I lived in Japan for a while on two occasions. And out of all my experience in that area, due to certain things that came to me at a certain moment in time, such as the Dragonfly Sutra, I felt compelled to tackle Buddhism to see if I could bring some critical scrutiny to the assumptions of Buddhism and also to bring it to its end, to conclude Buddhism. So I talk about the consummate end of Buddhism. I don't just intend to take it down and demolish it because it's over and done and obsolete and it doesn't play anymore in Kali Yuga. But I also intended to bring it to a consummate conclusion, like an almond tree comes to a consummate conclusion with the almond blossoms and then the fruit of the tree. So although it may appear that I'm nasty and arrogant and cocky and ridiculous, in the way that I approach Buddhism, my intentions are kind, believe it or not, or as kind as I dare to be regarding that particular topic. Regarding Dog Zen, it contains an instruction on how to use your mind in the way that your mind is designed to be used. Mind designed. Hey, it rhymes, so it must be true. Remember, the Gnostic teacher teaches you in the way your mind is designed to learn. That's what makes a Gnostic teacher what he or she truly and authentically is. So, complementary to that, Dog Zen has some things to say about the nature of of mind, which is a huge trope in Buddhism. You hear it repeated everywhere, the nature of mind. For instance, Zen is defined, was defined by D.T. Suzuki as direct pointing to the nature of mind. Dog Zen, which is a play on the Tibetan Dzogchen, meaning the great perfection, is direct pointing to the nature of mind. And the fundamental premise of Dog Zen is this. What directs your attention to the productions of your mind is not a product of your mind. And it goes on from there. And I invite everyone to investigate what is the Dragonfly Sutra. 
and to see what it does to your mind when you listen to it and when you recite it. So there you go. That covers all of the structure of Nemata, except for one element, which is now in development. Remember I said the campus is physically under construction and all of the courses are in development as you come into them. It's something that you will need to get used to, perhaps. This is a novelty. Sophianic School of Arts and Sciences has never existed before. Nothing like it has ever existed before. There is one element, Sophianic animism. We refer to that humorously as PT light or Planetary Tantra light. So I am going to post a unit explaining what Sophianic animism is one of these days. As you might imagine, running 12 courses, three vocations, and two YouTube channels, and at the same time, organizing several books for eventual publication by Terma Publishing through the platform, as you may imagine, if you just stretch your imagination just a little, little bit, it does keep me rather occupied. Having said that, I must add that I am grateful for those members of the staff who assist technically with editing and other matters design and editing, and most grateful of all to Caridwin, the admin and CEO, if you will, of Nemata, because it is in fact just two human animals that run this entire show. So on that note, I'll conclude, but I'll leave you with a little turn of phrase you know how I am with words <laughs> and uh, trickery, spelling, spelling with written words, spelling with spoken words, casting spells on your NLP. You know how I love to do that. Just to tease you. Just for the fun of it. The title of this talk is What You See When You Come to Nemata, right? It does not say what you find when you come to Nemata. I can tell you what you're going to see there, but I can't tell you what you're going to find there because that depends entirely upon you. It depends on what you're looking for to provide you with a transpersonal sense of purpose in life. And it depends on your disposition. There's a saying in Kala Tantra, there are three instructions of Kala Tantra. And one of them says, disposition is the mother of intent. So I will advise you that when you come into Nemata and you find some material that engages you and you want to learn more, you may find that you cannot fulfill that intent. It doesn't somehow work out or play out. Your interest fades or falters for some reason or another. Why does that happen? Well, disposition is the mother of intent. So if you are really going to seize upon some material in Nemata with intention and make it your own and thereby benefit from what this school offers you, you can only do that if you actually have the disposition to do that in the first place. So in coming into the school, be prepared, as the Boy Scouts say, be prepared to find out through groping around, fumbling around, trial and error, what is your true disposition to learn? What is your true disposition to teach others for enlightenment and for moral and 
creative inspiration. It may not be easy to orient yourself when you come into Nemata, but I assure you that if you stick with it, your disposition shall be revealed to you by what you find in the modern mystery school. Enough said, and I'll be seeing you, perhaps at Nemata, and who knows, maybe even in the beauty to come.